All right, hello everybody. Basil Sagos, DEC Commissioner. Great to be here back in Long Island. Um, we have a very exciting day on the environment right now. We'll get to that in a minute. Before we get going, I want to get uh, some important folks here that are with us. Acknowledged, New York State Senator Monica Martinez. Nassau County Executive Laura Curran. Town of Brookhaven Supervisor Ed Romaine. The village of beautiful Bellport Mayor Ray Fell. Dr. Chris Gobler, who's the endowed chair of, uh, at uh, SUNY Stony Brook. And then, of course, all of our environmental advocates and our conservation friends. Um, now, this is a great day. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, landmark day for us. Uh, we're talking about shellfish. So the governor launched a very exciting shellfish initiative uh, in, uh, in about a year and a half ago, $10.4 million out of the state's Environmental Protection Fund. Um, the concept being we're going to bring shellfish back to five sanctuary sites around Long Island, including run, one right here in Bellport Bay. Putting a hundred and exactly that's right, very exciting. Putting up to 170 million shellfish back in the water, and and why are we doing that? We're doing that for a few reasons. First of all, it's good to have shellfish in the water, right? This is an old industry in New York State and a historic industry, and it's we want to bring it back in strength. But secondly, and and almost more importantly, shellfish are an incredible tool to protect the environment. They have an ability, each, each clam, for example, can filter up to two liters of water per day. That's filtering uh, uh, historically dirty waters and making them clean again. So, in fact, using nature to fix pollution problems has been one of the hallmarks of this administration really since the governor took office and through Superstorm Sandy and into, into today. Uh, so it's exciting to, uh, to, to be able to have a program like this that, you know, for, for us to have this historic connection to the shellfish industry bringing these, these uh, beautiful creatures back, back into the water and helping them achieve some of our pollution enforcement and pollution cleaning up uh, objectives. So it's a significant day. We are uh, today uh, 773,200 shellfish, clams, have been planted. Today will be the 773,201st clam. That will be the governor's <laughs> clam which marks a halfway point in the Bellport project. Those are all adult clams. Uh, so today we're going to get the, the second half done, and we intend to get the rest of it done this year. Uh, again, the overall, uh, the overall target of 181 or 171 million clams, we're going to reach the halfway point this year in that over the five sanctuaries. That's adult and juvenile clams. So it's very exciting, and it's going to make a big difference here in Long Island. And it's really demonstrating to the world that we can start to use our, our natural resources to protect the, to protect the environment. Um, we're also working hard on two hatcheries. The governor's gotten us going on that, both in Flax Pond and uh, the Cornell Cooperative Extension. So obviously these things don't happen uh, alone. We've got an incredible crew of partners here that have been part of this. Uh, I want to tip my hat to my staff, Jim Gilmore and Deb Barnes, the work that they've done. Uh, Dr. Gobler, of course, and some of the pioneering work that he's done on shellfish. Uh, Pete Malinowski from the uh, Billion Oyster Project, Chris Pickerel from Cornell, uh, our friends in the environmental community, Nature Conservancy. Uh, Carl LeBeau, Adrian Esposito from CCE, and of course the Long Island Farm Bureau, uh, Karen Rivera, uh, as well as the Shinnecock Nation, uh, Siobhan Smith, have been fa really fantastic partners and, and many more. So we're grateful for everything you've done. Uh, for us, uh, we're looking forward to certainly planting today. Um, and uh, before, before I uh, turn the mic over, um, one, of the, one of the ways that we get work done here in Long Island and really across the state on the environment is through a strong partnership with the legislature. And you have in this district a stalwart environmental protector. It's her first term, uh, but she's already off and running. She had a great, uh, a great career back in the legislature, uh, county legislature, and now she's really uh, a big supporter of, of this. And we cannot get things done on the environment without the support of the par uh, and partnership of, uh, of this great legislature. So without further ado, I want to bring Senator Mar Mon Mar Monica Martinez to the microphone and have her talk about her adventures today. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon, and surely has been an adventure today. And as you see, I have a nice hat provided by DEC <laughs> today, so I won't get burnt. Uh, but I want to thank the Commissioner Sagos, and good afternoon to everyone, and welcome to the village of Bellport. It is such a great time that you will have today, and I want to thank the mayor for, for being here and the town supervisor for being with us today. But I really want to thank our governor for his leadership on this project and this initiative for a few years now. And you see the commitment that he has to protect Long Island and to protect our waters. 
As the governor has said many times, nothing is more crucial than protecting our environment. In the face of climate change and new threats to the quality of our water, we must be aggressive and innovative in our response to environmental issues, especially now more than ever. The Bellport Bay Sanctuary and the future sanctuaries across Long Island are exactly the sort of solutions we need to fight for that. Millions of these little creatures, which we will place gently in today's bay, are going to have a transformative effect on water quality all across Long Island. The pioneering of these sanctuaries is just another example of the governor's persistent and thoughtful approach to our environmental concerns. Thank you, and I wish all of you a great day today. And I would like to now introduce our great governor of this great state and a great protector of Long Island, our governor, Andrew Cuomo. Thank you. Well, thank you. It is a great day. I brought the weather I want you to know. It was supposed to rain. We changed that. It's a pleasure to be at Bellport. This is such a beautiful, really spectacular community. For those of you who are here all the time, I hope you appreciate it. Uh, I'd like to thank my colleagues who are here today. Uh, Commissioner Basil Sagos and the whole DEC team are doing literally uh, groundbreaking work. Uh, Senator Monica Martinez, the commissioner is right. It always takes money and it always takes funding. And a governor can only do what a governor can do. And then there's something called the New York State Legislature. Uh, and to have a champion in the Senate for the environment uh, is been, made all the difference. And uh, whenever we're fighting for these programs and we're fighting for, pro for funding, Senator Martinez has been there. And she is a force to be reckoned with. Uh, she may be fairly new, but she is powerful, and she will not take no for an answer. And she's a phenomenal uh, representative for her district. Let's give her a round of applause, Senator Monica Martinez. I want to thank County Executive Laura Curran for being here. This is not just a Suffolk uh, issue. It's a Long Island-wide issue. And Nassau and Suffolk are working together because the water that is uh, outside of Suffolk is the water that is outside of Nassau, so it's either all going to work or none of it is going to work. Uh, and Laura Curran has been fantastic as a partner. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> to the mayor, thank you for hosting us today. Pleasure. To Ed Romaine, he was ahead of his uh, time on this issue. Ed uh, was a visionary when it came to the environment, and he saw this. Uh, long before many other people, and he hasn't been there just with rhetoric and political support. He's been there with action, and I want to thank Ed very much for what he's done. Thank you. To all our environmental partners and our advocates and Dr. Gobler, uh, thank you all, because this really was a group effort to make this happen. Uh, when you take a step back, and we're in the middle of a legislative session right now, and you tend to get involved in the day-to-day -day and uh, the challenge of the day and passing this bill, passing that bill. But when you take a step back on what we need to accomplish as a society, as a community, there is no issue that comes higher on the list than the environment. And anyone who is observing the course of the world with any reality and objectivity, knows that this nation's planet, this planet's environment is in real, real trouble. We see it all across this country. We see it with climate change. We see it with tornadoes that we had last week in New York. We see it with seven feet of snow in Buffalo. We see it with Superstorm Sandy. You see it with the wildfires in California. You see it all across the globe, literally more flooding, more fires, more extremes in weather. Now, there are some people who turn a blind eye. I do not believe that denial is a life strategy, right? You will never solve a problem you refuse to acknowledge. That is uh, not true just for the environment. It's a lesson in life. Have the strength to acknowledge the problem, and that's the first step towards the solution. The priority is the environment and climate change.
And this state, I'm proud to say, is doing more than any state in the United States of America to balance and address climate change. We have the most aggressive goals. We're spending the most money. We are the most aggressive in terms of new technology. We're going to be announcing a wind turbine project off Long Island and uh, what they call the New York City Bight, which is going to be far and away the most aggressive wind turbine renewable project in the United States of America. We are, we've committed $3.5 billion for clean water infrastructure. We are now, right now, studying new standards for what clean water means and what chemicals can be in that water and what have we actually been ingesting for many years uh, and what chemicals and what concentrations of chemicals are actually safe. Uh, and if I had to guess, my guesses are normally informed guesses, I think we would be setting a national standard as to what is safe drinking water in the United States and we're going to be the first ever. We have record funding for the Environmental Protection Fund. We're rebuilding the Bay Park uh, Wastewater Treatment Facility, which was literally dumping waste into the south shore of Long Island. Uh, we're partnering with Suffolk County in a multi-hundred million dollar sewer system to stop nitrogen from reaching the water. We're fighting the federal government on dumping on the Long Island Sound. Uh, we passed laws that effectively stop offshore drilling. Uh, we started the most ambitious uh, environmental remediation program to clean up the Grumman plume, finally, that everybody's talked about, but was just migrating across Long Island. So we have all of these aggressive and creative and expensive, frankly, uh, initiatives that we're in the middle of. But we also are smart enough to remember the basics. And the basic is Mother Nature had the best plan. Our problem is we thought we were smarter than Mother Nature. And we thought we could tamper with Mother Nature's plan and there would be no consequences. Mother Nature knew what she was doing when she set up wetlands and marshlands. She knew what she was doing when she put dunes where she put dunes. She knew what she was doing when she created reefs. She knew what she was doing when she protected the Manhattan, Manhattan fishery because that is uh, the primary source for so many fish species. Mother Nature was right. We were wrong. And part of what we're doing is trying to restore Mother Nature's system. Mother Nature had the best water filtration system. We're now talking about carbon filters and ionized filters and all these fancy systems. She had the best water filtration system. It was called clams and oysters. That's what it was. And they were the water filtration system. We wiped them out. We wiped them out. We overharvested them. And then the water got so dirty that it couldn't sustain uh, the fishery any longer. We are now restoring the natural water filtration system. And that's what this is all about. And we're doing it to a grander scale than it has ever been done before, with a broader partnership than has ever been assembled before, with more scientific and research and technology than has ever been assembled before, and it is going to make a difference. It is going to work. It's not something that we are testing because Mother Nature proved it. We're just restoring it. And we're restoring it on a broad scale. And I am proud to be part of it. And I'm proud of all the people who have come together to make this happen. Uh, we're about halfway through our goal. We're going to meet the goal. And then if you know how the state of New York operates, you know what's going to happen next, which is we're going to double the goal. That's what's going to happen. Uh, because it is working. 
uh, and these efforts are just the beginning. So let's go out. Let's continue doing what we're doing. Congratulations to all of you for seeing the problem and stepping up to actually make a difference. The Native Americans have a proverb that I just love. We did not inherit the land from our parents. We are borrowing it from our children. And our responsibility is to leave it better than we had it. And certainly to turn it over to our children in at least the condition that it was turned over to us. And we have a lot of work to do because we did a lot of damage while we were here. And we're going to make sure we restore the beauty of this land before we're done. Thank you and God bless you. Let's go on the boat. <laughs>